Judy, Peter, how are we doing today? Hi, hey, Mike. Mike. How are you? Good, thank you. I'm good. I'll say an early happy holidays for some. I'm, I'm Canadian, so I've, I had my Thanksgiving like a month ago. But oh, nice. uh, yeah, to my American brethren, happy holidays. Love a Canadian uh, thanks. <laughs> Love this film because uh, I, I really love the little touches on spirituality, which I think is obviously very important during the holidays. And of course, one of the best stories that I come across that I'm sure other people are bringing up is that, Judy, you have this, I don't know, history within your family of being spiritual, but a little bit rebellious as well. Yes. Uh, not just your mother, which is great, but I love the story about you uh, wanting to switch churches because of a, a cute boy. Can you can you yeah. tell that? Yeah, when I was, do you know this story? No, I don't. So I was born and raised Catholic, and uh, I was in I was in catechism class. I was going to make my confirmation. I guess it was. I'd already had my first communion. I was going to do my confirmation, but class was really boring. And I went to Presbyterian church with my friend Carol. And there was this boy that I saw there named Jeff, and he was so cute. I asked my parents if I could switch to Presbyterian Church wow. because the Presbyterian boys just in general were cuter. Yeah. And um, <laughs> Classic Presbyterian <laughs> stereotype. All uh, the lookers. Yeah, and the so... The good dancers are Jesuits. <laughs> So my parents kids. were like, well, sure, okay, yeah, you can switch to Presbyterian. So I switched. Wow. I made the jump from Catholic to Presbyterian all because of a boy. And did it work out? Did you? No. 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 We're not together. Wow. Um, I I'm know. Surprised. But the boys were cuter at Presbyterian Church, and uh, it was, I will say, much more fun. Like, Catholics don't really have a youth group. I don't. I didn't grow up Catholic, but I'll take it from you. No youth group, and there's so many jokes I'm not making right now about that. Um, but yeah, so the youth Just let group. Let the whole train go yeah, by. Yeah, I did. Because <laughs> um, so yes, that was my rebellious state. That I was like, I think I'd rather go to that church. Did you recognize a little bit of that that character in Grace? That obviously spirituality is important, but she's a little bit of a rebel as well. Uh, I mean, yes and no. I don't. I think like what's interesting is like Grace. I mean, I like you describing her as a rebel because I think she actually is like following her heart and is is sort of like able to point out, like she sort of finds some agency and can point out to the rest of the people in the town, you know, like you're actually, you're not living by the values you claim to and everyone deserves a shot. Everyone deserves a chance. We don't know what happens behind closed doors. You don't ever know what's really going on in someone's life. And so to judge so harshly and so quickly is is not the way that we say that we want to live our lives. And I think that's true for all people. Mr. Holmes, you obviously enjoy a great pop culture reference, uh, video games and comics and things like that. When I watched Bob, uh, I couldn't help but kind of I don't know, feel a little old school Bing Crosby coming out in him oh, a little wow. bit. Oh, wow. That's yeah. the first time hearing that. Wow. I'm going to search <laughs> for a way to thank you on Bing.com. <laughs> if you were to build the perfect, I'm not saying Bob wasn't perfect, but if you were to build the perfect movie dad yeah. by kind of taking pieces from some of these pop yeah. culture icons, what, who would you take and what would you take from them? Well, I would take the silliness from Tim Allen and the Santa Claus, mix it with the goofiness of uh, Clark Griswold, uh, which is, um, why am I forgetting his name? Chevy Chase. Chevy Chase. So mix those two in a blender. Whose body? Well, my body. <laughs> Because we want to give the people what they want and need. We got to move units. We got to sell tickets. And then I'm going to put in a sprinkle of Hugh Grant in <gasps> Love Actually. Just to give it a little stammery some quality. Some class. Some class, uh, some sing song, and some cheer. Um, but you have, then you have like a funny but sliding around slapsticky charm bowl. And, and the dry nice. humor of Bob Newhart and the Elf. Oh my goodness. Love. Yeah, put that in a Vitamix. Judy, what I loved about Grace as well is obviously she's one of the only characters that give the Herdmans a chance when they were kind of brushed off and forgotten. Obviously, being an actor, you must have gone through a time in your life or career where you felt overlooked. So I figured in the spirit of Christmas, oh. this is your chance to give a shout out to somebody who was your Grace, who gave you a chance. Oh, my gosh. I mean, I Here's would... you at 2 a.m. tonight. <gasps> 
by the way, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. Mr. Wilson! <laughs> Just I mean, think hard. I I mean, my my first job was for Doug Ellen on a movie called Kissing a Fool. He he gave me my first acting job ever. Um, so that's pretty that's pretty amazing. Theater teacher? No director. No, I mean like I'm trying to help you think of somebody better. Well, Mrs. Hutchison in high school, obviously. Oh, she love. gave me the best advice of my life, which was when in doubt, sing loud. That's good. And so it taught me, like, I, I, I did improv in college, not like at, like the improv or anything, but that was kind of our acting class in college. And it definitely taught me, like, not to be, like, timid in the room and timid on stage and just to, like, really go for it. So, yeah. How about your mom or your dad, but not both? Oh. Um, just one. Yeah. Them. Uh, Pete, I'm going to put you on the spot as well, because obviously Bob gives the most important gift which is that delicious giant ham. Yes. Uh, and it's, of course, it means more than just a delicious dinner. It's an act of consideration. So can you think of a time in Christmas's past where someone gave you your ham? Oh, my gosh. Well, I'm from a family of terrible, terrible gift givers. <laughs> they would be unwrapped in my mom's office just sitting there for us to see. No. Yeah, no surprises. Oh. Uh, we also only and forever, look, I love my family, but we're not good at gifts. So you'd only get what you asked for, which is, you know, one way to do it. Isn't that the idea? <clears throat> is it? So ungrateful. No, no, I was grateful. And there was a lot to be thankful for. But when I married uh, my wife, Valerie, and I started celebrating Christmas with my family and with her family, they started giving me, like her mom, Beth, gave me like a book that I had mentioned once in passing, like expert gift ninjas that would like make a note that would like be like Pete likes this kind of food let's get him this so not just like what you asked thoughtful. for which is uh, thoughtful so now it's been a great joy of my life to keep a year-round file in oh my, my phone writing down gift ideas I learned it from them my um, first Christmas with my now husband, he did that. He like wrote down everything I ever said that I wanted or liked. And it was like insane. I had more gifts under the Christmas tree than my kids. And the second year, he forgot to buy me anything and like literally wrapped up like our snacks in the pantry. And I was like unwrapping crackers okay. and stuff. And it was very funny though, because we'd gone on a trip. It wasn't, he's the best guy. Dean, Dean. Christmas memory though. Yeah. Can I say, real, real talk, if you don't know what to get, if, you, if you're an eater like me, and Val loves food as well. What you do is on Christmas, you give them all the best sugar cereals wrapped up. Oh, I did that for yes. my wife one year, because we're kind of one of those houses that try not, we don't like just buy cinnamon toast crunch because you just eat the whole box. But on Christmas, Smart. it was the last gift. I'm talking peanut butter puffs. I'm talking uh, cinnamon Loops. toast crunch. Frosted Flakes is a surprise sleeper hit. Oh, so all good. All of them. Life? And I love life. Cinnamon life. Life is so Cinnamon life. good. It's the best. So you give them that. They don't even sell that stuff in Los Angeles. So if you have no ideas, wrap the best cereals because people go nuts. And, and there's something nostalgic and kind of Christmassy about eating I hope my agents are watching. I hope your husband's watching. <laughs> good Lord, crackers? <laughs> I think you guys probably saved a lot of husbands out there this holiday season. It's a good one. <laughs> Yeah, I just want to say, well, you know, on a personal basis, uh, it's great interviewing both of you because you're both responsible for a lot of laughs. Uh, Pete, I will personally say that my wife and I quote your Batman, uh, oh. you know, I, I, I confuse easily as, <laughs> as much as we can. Yeah, whenever we can squeeze it in. So, I love that. That's my favorite compliment. Thank you for telling me. You're very welcome. For yeah. those laughs, though, thank you. That's the best Christmas gift yet. Oh, ever. I love that. Well, tell her. I can fuse easily. <laughs> and Merry Christmas. Hey, Real Students, thanks for watching. If you want to subscribe to Real School, click that round Real School logo right beside me. Also, click that damn notification bell so you're aware of all of Real School's new content. You can follow me on Twitter, and of course, if you get anything out of Real School, you can always give a little back. Just click the link in the description below or the button down there, and you can become part of my Patreon team.